In this video, I'm going to take a look at ionic bonding. So ionic bonding is the way metals and non-metals actually combine with each other. So there's some examples for you. So sodium chloride, sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal, copper oxide, metal non-metal, iron sulfate, metal, and these are non-metals. And just in case you're not sure where the metals and non-metals live on the periodic table, there's a dividing line that starts at group 3. So I've put boron, that's on the non-metal side of this dividing line, and aluminium is on the metal side of the dividing line. So anything to the right of the dividing line is a non-metal. Anything to the left of this line is a metal. So that includes all the elements in here, the transition elements, which are these elements in the middle of the periodic table, and of course, groups one and two, they're all metals as well. So if you've got something in here bonding with something in here, you will have ionic bonding. So we'll start by looking at the metals and what they do in terms of electrons. There's a couple of facts there for you. Metals always lose their outer electrons and most of them do that to achieve a noble gas structure. And that's what you taught at GCSE and that's absolutely fine for the majority of the metals that we'll study and it's absolutely fine for AS. But I do want to make a point that transition elements do something different but don't worry about that until A2. So metals lose outer electrons to become stable. And when metals lose electrons, they form positive ions. And they're also known as cations. Why positive? Well, if you think about an atom, if you think about the metal as the atom before it loses its electrons, it must have the same number of protons and electrons. Protons are positive. Electrons are negative, so if they have the same number of each, the atom will be neutral. If you lose electrons, you've still got the protons in the nucleus. That means you're going to have an imbalance of positive charge. You're going to have more positive charge than negative charge. And so the particle produced, the ion, is now positively charged. I'm going to demonstrate what metals do in terms of electrons with sodium. So we've got sodium on the board there. It has an atomic number of 11. Therefore, it has 11 protons in its nucleus. And to keep the atom neutral, it must have 11 electrons in the outer shells. And they are arranged 2 in the first shell, 8 in the second shell, and 1 in the third shell. So sodium is um, not particularly happy with this arrangement. It doesn't like the fact that it's got this electron here in this um, outer shell on its own. And you can see underneath there's this um, full shell that would make it nice and stable. So what does sodium do? Well, it obviously gets rid of that electron and gives it away and forms an ion. So let's have a look at the product of that. So on the right there I've drawn up the um, official way of representing the sodium ion that's formed. Sometimes you might see the eight electrons in the second shell shown there because I, I suppose that's, the, that's now the outer shell. This is also an accepted way to represent a metal ion. So effectively we now have this empty outer shell because we've lost this electron from here, got this empty outer shell, and other little rules to remember. Ions are always um, put into square brackets, and there's the charge there in the uh, top right hand corner. It's a one plus ion because it's lost one negatively charged electron, so it still has 11 protons in its nucleus, but it now only has 10 electrons. So 
So it's got 11 pluses and 10 minuses, and therefore it has an overall charge of 1 plus. And the formula of the sodium ion is obviously just Na plus. Now the great thing about the periodic table is once you know what one of the members of a group does, you can you already know what the rest of the group do. So I'm not going to go through each group one metal in turn, just hopefully you'll appreciate that all group one metals do exactly what sodium do, and so they all form one plus ions. And I just want to make the point with this one that the group, it's the group 3 metals that form the 3 plus ions. Remember at the top of group 3 you've got boron that sits on the non-metal side of the dividing line so that doesn't form an ion. If we look at non-metals now you can see that they are doing the opposite to the metals so they gain electrons to become stable to achieve that noble gas structure and they form negatively charged ions and we call them anions. So why negatively charged? Well remember atoms are neutral you've got the same number of protons in the nucleus as electrons in the outer shells if you gain electrons you're going to have more negative charge than positive charge and so you will become charged and that's your negatively charged ion. To demonstrate what happens with the non-metals, I'm going to use fluorine as my example. So there's an atom of fluorine drawn up, and you can see that it has two electrons in its first shell, and seven electrons in its second shell, which is its outer shell. And remember, non-metals gain electrons to achieve that noble gas structure with the full outer shell, and so what's it going to do? It's going to accept one electron from something else and it will form a negatively charged ion as a result. So we'll look at how to draw that now. So there's the diagram for the fluoride ion and I've underlined the eyed part because it doesn't, it isn't called the fluorine ion so please don't make that silly mistake. This is the fluoride ion. When you turn a non-metal into a negatively charged ion, so it's a non-metal on its own, its name always ends in ide. So fluoride, chloride, bromide, nitride, sulfide. So here's the dot and cross diagram. You can see why it's called dot and cross now, because of this. This is the new electron that's come in, this one here. You've got to show on your diagram that that's come from something else. So the original electrons are the crosses and we're using the dot to represent the electron that's the new electron from somewhere else. The overall charge on the fluoride ion is 1 minus because it's gained one extra electron and we would draw that the formula of the fluoride ion is F minus. And again just like we did with the metals of group 1 we're going to say that all group 7 atoms because they've got seven electrons in their outer shell, they're all going to do the same as fluorine. So they're all going to accept one electron, gain one electron, and form these one minus ions with these formulae. Remember, the name must end in ide. So we've got chloride, bromide, iodide. And likewise, the non-metals of group six form the two minus ions because they gain two electrons. And so you've got oxide O2 minus, sulfide S2 minus, selenide Se2 minus, etc. So we've explained how the sodium ion and the fluoride ion are formed. So what's an ionic bond then? Well, we've got these two ions now, these two particles, charged particles. And basically, these are going to attract each other because they have opposite charges. And it's the attraction between the ions that is the ionic bond. 
And there's your definition of the ionic bond. So it's the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. So we'll finish with a typical exam style question on ionic bonding. So you can see there it's written draw dot and cross diagrams to show the bonding in magnesium chloride and sodium oxide. And we need to show outer shell electrons only. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on for the answer. So magnesium chloride first, so magnesium loses two outer electrons and forms the Mg2 plus ion, so we show it like that. Don't forget your square brackets and your 2 plus charge and you'll see I'm showing the um, full outer shell there with those eight electrons in. And if you think about it, magnesium's just lost two electrons, chlorine only needs to gain one, so we need two separate chloride ions. And you can see there, the dots represent the seven original electrons from the chlorine. And the cross is the electron from the magnesium. And just while we're on, the formula of magnesium chloride is going to be MgCl2. Now there is another way you could show that, and you could say that either. Magnesium 2 plus and 2 times the chloride ion. So sodium oxide now, sodium's in group 1, so it's going to lose 1 electron to get a full outer shell. Oxygen's in group 6, so it needs to gain 2. So we're going to need 2 sodium ions now to satisfy 1 oxygen. And so we draw 2 separate sodium ions and 1 oxide ion. Again, don't forget your square brackets in your charges. And the formula of sodium oxide is going to be Na2O. And just with magnesium chloride, you can show that like that as well. 